You guys are what thirty years in now, huh? Yeah, it's our third anniversary. Years in. So yeah. are you doing a special um, celebration tour? Yeah. And uh, what, I mean, what do we got lined up? What's going on? Yeah, the thirty year anniversary tour. But our first thing, our first album came out in September of eighty seven. Yeah. So we got this idea actually last year to do this 30th anniversary tour and, and actually started it last year because, you know, it started in 87. But it was September, so that album lasted for an entire year. So we're carrying it on through this year, too. Cool. How much are y'all touring? Uh, you, you know, actually, let me say this, and I, and I know that it'll, it'll, it'll eventually get around to the answer. <laughs> 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 you we, know got, we got a long one coming. <laughs> you know, I, I've been uh, I've been gone from the group for seventeen years, and uh, and I had uh, between the gospel stuff and the, I had a little bluegrass band as well too, and and uh, so therefore when when we talked about putting the wheels back on this thing, I you know I just said, look, you, you know, fellas, I got commitments, you know, to to stuff that you know, man, and I'm not going to call anybody and cancel on them. So uh, you know, if we can. Uh, you know, as far as the logistics, if we can work around this stuff, uh, you know, all well and good. But, I, you know, I've got mm -hmm. stuff that I've got to get out of the way first. Mm -hmm. And uh, so in doing so, uh, you know, we started, you know, working dates. And, and you know, Mike said, man, we probably won't do more than 30, 35 dates. Well, that year we He's a liar. <laughs> he's a filthy, strank liar. <laughs> he's the booking agent. Of course he's a liar. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so it, it wound up being about 45, and then the next year, you know, it, it, it pulled up to about 65. and and uh, But a lot of the commitments that I had, you know, were, were, were out of the way, and, uh -huh. and uh, so therefore it didn't hinder. Uh, we wound up last year, we wound up doing, you know, right at around 90, 92, 93 wow. dates. And that really actually was really, really good for, you know, as far as an impact, as far as us trying to mm -hmm. to make another run at this thing. And, and uh, uh, you know, this year it's probably going to be every bit of that and then some, uh, you know, because the, the potential of, of, of us being able to see come to fruition it, as far as what we really want to do, uh, you know, you know this as well as I do. There's not a lot of people that get a second chance – yeah, do you know the only one that I know that ever had a third chance in this business was Jones. You know, George Jones could go <laughs> uh -huh. away and come back and get mad at him. He'd come back, but uh, as far as a uh, rule of thumb, I mean, you know, that's that's usually not the case. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we signed with BMG, and and uh, the, the new single is is doing absolutely great. That's great. Yeah, it's early last America. year, Jay Demarcus heard that Marty had rejoined the band and mm -hmm. he called, I don't know why he called me but he called me and asked if it was true and I said well yeah he's he's back and he said man look he said uh, you know our band are big fans of Shenandoah he said the first song we ever sang together uh, at some little club they were fixed to uh, sing at they were trying to find a song that they all knew uh -huh. and somebody said how about Church on Cumberland Road so they sung that and he said the, when we hit that chorus and the harmonies came in he said we knew we had something special and we just always had a a fondness for you guys. He said, I'd love to go in the studio with y'all, you know, and, and try cool. to cut a few sides and uh -huh. see if we can't get a deal. And darn if we didn't, you know, we came up here and looked for songs and, and I went to Ask Cap and spent two days over there and went through several hundred songs. You know what that's like, looking for yeah. songs for an album. And uh, we picked uh, picked five to, to cut and, and uh, chopped it for a deal, got a deal with BMG, and BMG decided they wanted us to, do the, to use those songs, but they wanted us to record a live album and we had always wanted to do that all mm -hmm. these years you know we've always had a really terrific band and we always wanted to cut a live record so and i think the label probably wanted to have all those songs on the on the album you know next yeah, to next to me yeah. and church on cumberland road sure. to sell and, and you know that and you know this as well as i do too uh uh you know as you start playing your tunes and you know a few years go by you make a few changes to the tunes and you you find out what you know what can what can bring a little bit more excitement to the audience, mm -hmm. and, and before you know it, it's kind of kind of morphed into something that's that's a whole sure. lot more than what you cut. So therefore, there was a lot of that through the years that it went on, and uh, one of the reasons, like Mike was saying, one of the reasons why we really wanted to do, you know, uh, a live album, uh, which it, it was something that always intrigued us, and, and we always tried to talk you know, labels in, in, into doing mm -hmm. that. But, you know, tonight, we don't need none of the rehash stuff. 
But the reason why we always wanted to do it was was to show that I think in a lot of ways it, it's not just that people like the material, but we had really uh, had continued to love them because we continued to change them. Now, now we've never changed one to the point that somebody go, man, I, you know, I used to like that song, but it, it don't even sound anything like it does. Uh-huh. You know, there's just a few little old things that you'd give anything in the world when you were cut and you would have done. Yeah. Yeah, and and it, you know it, it starts to evolve. You ever listen to those records? Because I don't, li- you know, listen to our songs from <laughs> well, records from a long time ago. And you listen to it, and you go, "Well, you know, things that you've changed live, and it just becomes." You were thinking that was on the record, and you're like, "Man, <laughs> that record could have been a lot better," you <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah. But it, I think it's interesting too the the way that that things have changed. Um, you know, Chesney's just done a live album with n- new music. Uh, Eric Church, you know, just released a whole huge box set of live stuff and whatever. And I think there was a thing for a while, you know, you, you had those great live records with Peter Frampton and this, that were huge live records, so great. And then, then when there was a, a long period when live recordings didn't sell at all. And we're in a period now where nothing's selling. Mm-hmm. Everybody's just streaming and whatever. So why not anyway? You know, and I yeah. think fans, they, you know, I mean, Ronnie and I are playing Vegas. We, we know they don't come to hear some new music that we made. Sure. It's if you throw something in, they may like it or whatever. But honestly, they want to hear Church on Cumberland Road. They yeah. want to hear My Marie is what That's, you yeah. know. That's so, right. so that being on the record, I think it's all not just about sales, but it's just about making fans happy. And, and well, you know, we've that. never made a nickel on a record that we cut ever. Still to this day, <laughs> I mean, we. I don't know if you remember back in our earlier days uh, when we got named Shenandoah that wasn't our choice and and we got named Shenandoah anyway and it turns out there was other Shenandoahs around and, uh-huh. and uh, we were in in a running the whole pass with Shenandoah yeah we uh, there. we were uh, we <laughs> were in, uh, <laughs> it wasn't pretty I'll put it that way you mentioned a while ago though um, uh, about Hall who just passed away That's recently right. yeah so both of you guys I mean that he was kind of obviously for most people do know I think that that, that'll be watching us talking, you know, because they're they're insider musics. But um, and there's been some great documentaries, you know, yeah. since then have come out and whatever about the whole Muscle Shoals scene. Um, what what were your feelings when, you know, when when you saw he passed away? Well, it was sad. I mean, it was sad for all of us. Rick gave all of us our the opportunity to get into this business. I guess because I was around him as a young songwriter way before Shenandoah ever got started. And had a really special relationship with him. He played in a band when he was in his 20s with my uncle. And uh, so he, you know, he really liked me and my brother, I think, because of that, too. You know, we, we were from close mm-hmm. to Muscle Shows anyway. But when he passed away, you know, he uh, it was a sad, sad day for all of us. I had heard that he had been really, really sick and called Linda, his wife, and asked if I could come by. I'd like to see him. You know, I just wanted to tell him, <clears throat> how much I appreciated him giving me the opportunity to be in this business, mm-hmm. you know, that we're in. You know, we would have Shenandoah would have never happened if it hadn't been for Rick Hall, mm-hmm. you know, and Fame Recording Studio. And uh, I just wanted to tell him that. And Linda said he's just not he he don't feel up to it right now. Mm-hmm. And then a couple of weeks later, he was gone. Yeah. And they actually called us. We sung at his funeral. Oh. They asked us to sing church. Uh, church. They asked us to sing uh, Sunday in the South. Yes. Yeah, oh, Rick's so. favorite record that he produced on us. Cool. But you know my my relationship uh, with Rick, uh, of course, being part of the band. Um, but you know the the singers because he always worked, you know, with the Nancy Stanton and and the, and the Clarence Carters and and Mac Davis and, and you know so he was really uh, vocally driven to that 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 always seemed to be his strong suit mm-hmm. and. Uh, Rick and I, I'll never forget one day. Rick and I, in fact, I even told this at the funeral, <laughs> uh, because to tell you the truth, it it it, it really wasn't a it, it was an awakening for me to to understand you know Rick a little bit better. Well, well, honestly, a whole lot better uh, than what I what I ever had before. Uh, I mean, he was just wearing me out. I, I mean, just <laughs> I sang. Sunday in the South, 56 times <laughs> from top to bottom, from top to bottom. Ah, let's go again. I, I'm, you know, I'm not feeling that. And after about the 56th time, he goes, <laughs> Marty, 
my gosh, son, where in the world is the emotion? And I'm thinking, man, oh, man, I, it, 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 it's probably about 50 back. <laughs> you know, so anyway, so then he got out there and he got to monkeying around my head, headphones. And, man, are you listening? To, are you hearing what you need to hear? I mean, is it, you, you know, do, do, do you want me to turn the lights down lower? Uh, no, Rick, uh, no. <laughs> but, but the thing about it was uh, that I'd realized uh, only after he and I, I, I mean, before it was all over, when he wanted to start doing the headphone mix, you know, I told him, I said, Rick, look, it's fine. Let it alone. It, you know, let me just keep doing it for you. I, I'll just keep doing it for you until, and, and until you feel like you, you've got the right one. And and, and I was, to tell you the truth, I, I was more than willing to do that. Look, I, I always thought the more I sing, the more I warm up anyway. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, hey, you want to go 57, 58? Let's go 60. I, I'm good with that. <laughs> It was that that conversation that he would have with you in tone, that you you know you you just say no no wait a, wait a minute now, now I'm willing to do anything in the world you want me to do I, you know and I and I've not balked you know I'm I'm not bucking up or anything like that but now now when you start telling me that I'm not giving you everything that you want now don't now don't give me that now <laughs> and then so anyway so you know it's kind of like you sloughing off. And I, I'm thinking, uh, there's no way in the world that's happening. Now, you may think it is. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, in, in other words, I took them headphones, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I threw them down with enthusiasm. <laughs> and and I walked out, you know, and, and uh, man, he'd come out of the control room the whole way. I mean, he was, uh, of course, there was some uh, verbal exchanges that uh, they wasn't fit for Sunday school, but... Uh, when it was all over with, said and done, and, and you know... I really kind of think in a way I, I knew it, but that day and then days to come after that, I realized that, look, Rick had one way of doing things. Now, people used to think Rick was real, real complex, and he wasn't. He honest and truly was not. Mm -hmm. The one thing that he wanted, the reason why he would aggravate people is because he literally wanted it to be the best that it could be. And... He knew if it ever got to the point where it satisfied him, it would have gone way past satisfying everybody else. <laughs> and, and that's, look, he had one way of doing it and one way of thinking about it and, and one way of trying to get that out of you. Mm -hmm. And he, he would insult, he, he, would, he would throw down on you. But now the, the one thing that I, I really did appreciate, Rick, for was when, when you got it the way he liked it, now that... Now that's what I'm talking about. Do you hear that? Do you do you hear that? And you know, I mean, even to the Make point you that feel you know, special. yeah, you know, and, and and when when he'd play it, you know, when he'd play the the vocals for everybody, y'all ain't hearing that. Y'all can't hear that emotion in that. You know, instead, I mean, it, it, he nobody could have been a bigger cheerleader mm -hmm. for you. You know, he just wore you up and down the field. <laughs> and then until he got what he wanted, but but until then, uh, Don Gant uh, was a lot like that too. You know, he'd make you feel like you were a genius if you ever did anything that satisfied him. But you knew how special it was if you'd satisfied him too, because right. most days it's like you got more talent than that. You know, you yeah. need to you need to go work some more. Just love enough. Know, bring me something else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But Rick was always sincere, and I, you know, I, I think after that day, we, he and I both, truly understood one another. You know, he, 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 he even, he even said, "Look," he said, "Look, I, I know good and well you, 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 you'll stay with me, you'll work with me until we get it." You know, our original guitar player Jim Seals, he used to tell this story, and I don't remember if Marty was out on the floor singing or <laughs> I was. I was on. I was. On, I know the story you fixed to tell now. But anyway, so if Jim, you miss it, I, I, I'll finish it. <laughs> well, well, anyway, so Jim said, you know, Rick called him and said, "Man, come down here and, and sit with me, you know, in the control room while we're doing these vocals." And uh, so Marty sang something, and and he'd look at Jim and say, "What do you think, Jim?" And Jim, he's a little bit flat on that, Rick. And Rick would hold the talk back button down to go. Marty's a little bit flat on. Let's do it again. So they do take another take. What do you think, Jim? He got a better one that. Marty, I believe he got a better one that. Let's do yeah, it one more time. There, there wasn't no there wasn't no tuning with Rick. Uh -huh. right. You you didn't tune with Rick. That's right. But anyway, so he goes, well, let's do it one more time. So they took another take, and this went on evidently for a little while. And finally, he goes, well, what do you think, Jim? He goes, man, he's I know he's got a better one than that, Rick. And he goes, hey, Mark. Jim, if you ain't got nothing good to say, get your rear end out of here. You 
ain't done nothing but run him down since you've been here and run him out of the control room. <laughs> Probably didn't even have tuning back then. No, that no, wasn't, wasn't, a, it, it, which it, it, wasn't a bad thing. Yeah. They were cutting tape, but you couldn't cut tape yeah. that much. It's all it was, the tape yeah. and uh, no tuning. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, Rick, I mean, you, 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 sorry, boys. Yeah. Singer ain't with it today. Do it again. <laughs> what did it feel like when you guys, after, after uh, all those years of not doing it, plugging back in again, um, what was that day like? You know, it, it was uh, – it was really incredible. In fact, you know, we had never drawn very well in Western Canada. I mean, we, we, we just never did. That was our first show back then. And uh, so anyway, so we decided, look, uh, man, we don't need any bad press for sure. <laughs> uh, and, it, you know, look, if we're going to go out there and we're going to put the wheels back on this thing, then let's, let's go to the most unlikely place in the world. Uh, that we could get by with a couple shows to see, mm -hmm. you know, see how this is going to work. All right. Uh, so we actually worked a couple casinos, but but the very very first day, we got out there and we started sound checking, and a sound check, you know, as you know, mm -hmm. that you, that'll usually take, you know, thirty forty five minutes an hour, you, depending on you know what what everybody wants to get, or unless you're going to work something up. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, we we literally had sound check for six hours. <laughs> now it, it wasn't to get any, you know, to find out whether we got the sounds back up. It was like, hey, man, do you remember? You remember how we used to do this and how that would follow that? Man, let, let's run over that and see if that see if that still clicks. And then uh, Byron Cumby, uh, our uh, at that time our, our, our outhouse front guy, sound guy. Uh, Said, you know, fellas, you know, the doors, the doors in an hour. Uh, you know, were y'all going to get everybody gonna get cleaned up and, and Is that what y'all are wearing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wearing the show. So yeah. anyway, so it, you know, it just kinda it it it, it just kind of seemed like a like a glove on a rooster. It just uh -huh. it just went on that. You know, <laughs> and it and it was really, really good. And he goes, and you ain't gonna believe this. He said, the line is wrapped around the building. Waiting to get in, really, and you know, just kind of looked at it, got thinking, what? <laughs> and then so th then you realize, you know, said, so, man, do, 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 do you, do you know how long we we were sound checking? Man, it was six hours. You get to thinking, you know, it didn't seem like six hours for one thing, uh, and then to turn right back around, and you you, you felt pretty comfortable, and you felt mm -hmm. pretty good that uh, you know, phew, well, at least we ain't gonna. At least we ain't gonna be terrible. Had a good show, you know. Oh, it was killer. Yeah, I think we we encored that night three times. Wow, that's mm -hmm. great. Well, congrats. Glad Thank you guys you. are back. I know a lot of fans are too. Glad you came by to They're visit. No more good glad to see we you. Are. We, yeah. should, we appreciate appreciate you having us, kicks. <laughs> you bet.